because the church goes beyond the preacher the church goes beyond the choir the church goes beyond the position the church is all about Jesus Christ amen and so once again tonight's word on Wednesday will be given to us by Minister Latricia Thomas we're thanking God for her presence, and at this time, I will turn it over to her. God bless you, Sister Thomas. Amen. God bless you, Pastor, and good evening, Messiah Baptist Church. It is a good day to be alive in Christ Jesus. Amen. I pray that you've had an awesome day and that you are ready for a word on Wednesday. Amen. Let us open with a word of prayer. Father God, how wonderful you are in all your ways. We thank you, O oh God, for your presence in our lives, and we thank you, Lord, for your desire to be in relationship with us. For if it were not for your call, where would we be? We thank you for your only begotten son, Jesus, who gave his life that we might have life in him, and we are grateful for your word that we can look to to find out your promises, your principles, hallelujah, and who you are and who we are in you. We call on your Holy Spirit to lead and guide this uh, word today, and may, may every heart and mind be open and receptive to receive what you have for each of us today, and may you be glorified in all that is said and done. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen and amen. Yeah. Amen. Like I said, it's a good day to be alive in Christ Jesus. But we aren't always uh, sure of that when you look and see what's going on in the media and what's going on in our country and in the world. We just got word today about the outcome of the um, uh, Breonna uh, Taylor, um, not trial, but uh, to find out whether or not any of the police officers would be charged and then people have their thoughts about that. There are people who have their thoughts about the election. There are those who are far left and far right. There are those who are in the middle or somewhere in between. Uh, there are those thinking about what we're going to do regarding this pandemic. And our minds are just filled with thoughts, just filled with thoughts, uh, including my own. And so I went out to buy a journal and I saw this journal and it just resonated with me. And the title on the cover of the journal was Gather Your Thoughts, Gather Your Thoughts. And so it just resonated with me. And so that was the one I chose. And as I meditated on that, the Lord took me actually to two scriptures, but we're going to deal with one tonight. And that scripture is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. And I'm going to read it to you both from the New Living Translation as well as the King James, which happens to be a personal favorite of mine. Again, that's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verse 5. And it reads in the New Living Translation, we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God, and we capture their rebellious thoughts, and teach them to obey Christ. Amen. And now from the King James Version, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Amen. Capture or gathering your thoughts. When I was meditating on this, I thought about um, our trash delivery. There was a time when we used to be able to just put all our garbage in one container and take it outside and the garbage truck would come and pick it up. But now we have to separate. <laughs> we have to separate our garbage and put it in the, its proper place so that it can be picked up uh, by the proper authorities, if you will. And I would uh, suggest to you that the same is true uh, for our thoughts that go on in our mind. There is a battle raging in our mind, and all of these thoughts are seeking uh, to take prominence in our minds. But God is saying to us, hold up, gather your thoughts. There are all kinds of thoughts that are triggered based on what's going on with us 
uh, in today's society, the oppression that we as a people have dealt with for far too long, and we want it to come to an end, and it's taken too long, so some of us are trying to think of other things that we can do to help God along, amen, that's the truth, with this Brianna Taylor, um, not verdict, but decision on who would be charged and why, we have thoughts about that, people are out uh, demonstrating and sharing their thoughts about that. And so all these thoughts are going on in our minds. And it's not new to us. We are not the first ones to have all these different thoughts going on in our minds. Paul, who is the writer of 2 Corinthians, realized that there was a lot of thoughts going on in the minds of the Corinthian church. The Corinthian church was, uh, Corinth was a port city. And there were a lot of different thoughts, a lot of different beliefs, a lot of different religions and thought processes going on, uh, even in that time. And even within the church, there were false teachings that were raised up uh, that were causing people uh, to think differently than the teachings that Paul had taught based on God's word. Um, before he got locked up, if you will. Yes, he wrote the letter from prison, uh, but he was writing to uh, the believers of Corinth to help them to separate, like we do our garbage, to separate the thoughts that are going on in our minds. Thoughts come from different places. Thoughts originate from our own experiences, Thoughts also come from the enemy. The enemy is seeking to fill our head with thoughts. And then God as well also places thoughts in our mind through his word. And he's saying to us that we need to differentiate these thoughts, gather them in their proper place. And based on today's teaching, we need to bring the wrong thoughts into captivity to the obedience of Christ. What happens if our thoughts go unchecked. Uh, Joyce Meyer, Pastor Joyce Meyer says in her book, Battlefield of the Mind, which I recommend highly, that we should think about what we're thinking about. Because if we're not careful, our thoughts can take us down a road uh, that won't lead us in the way that God would have us to go. Even in society, when you think of the media, if you're listening to Fox News, they're trying to lead you down one path and get you to think in a certain way. If you're listening to MSNBC, they're saying pretty much the opposite and want you to go down a road based on what they're saying. But as believers, God calls us to think on things that he wants us to think about. And so how do we bring our thoughts into captivity? And why is it important to gather our thoughts? As I said before, if we do not gather or deal with our thoughts, our thoughts will take us somewhere that we did not intend to go. So when a thought first comes to our mind, we, have, we make a decision in a split second on whether or not we're going to reject the thought or hold on to the thought. And that decision should be based on God's word. Does that thought line up with the word of God and God's will for my life? If it doesn't, then Paul is telling us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, that we are to gather those thoughts and bring them into captivity to the obedience of Christ, that we're to cast them down. They don't belong in our minds anymore. They can be disposed of because they don't line up with God's word. Amen. So think about it. Think about what you're thinking about because our thoughts attach to our feelings, which cause us to feel a certain kind of way. And if we've been feeling uh, anxious, if we've been feeling depressed, if we've been feeling uncertain, it could be because of the thoughts we're thinking, and it may be time for us to gather those thoughts and put them in their proper place so they can be taken out by the proper authority. Amen. So God is saying, bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. 
some plain thoughts that we know uh, don't make sense. There are some that are easy to deal with. God says, thou shalt not kill. So any thoughts of homicide or suicide, gather those thoughts and bring them into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Cast them down in the name of Jesus and don't allow yourself to focus or dwell on those thoughts. There are other things that may not be so easily discerned or so easily understood as not lining up with God's word. In those instances, we are to think about what we're thinking about and ask for the Holy Spirit. Is this something I should be thinking about? Is this something I should dwell on or should I cast down that imagination and bring it into captivity to the obedience of Christ? In these days and times with so much going on, a lot of thoughts are raging. But God wants that we prosper and be in good health, even as our souls prosper. God does not want us to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And so it's important that we think about what we're thinking about. Amen. Think about how you feel based on what's going on in the media. Is that where God wants you? And what good is it actually doing us to get worked up about what's going on? Yes, it's wrong what's going on. We see a lot that does not line up with God's will. We see a lot of things, injustice. We see uh, deceit. We see uh, just outright lies. We see a lot of things going on. But when we think about it, What good is that doing us? Yes, we should be moved to action as God leads us. Maybe he wants us to go out and protest. Maybe he wants us to get on bended knee and pray. Maybe he wants us to repent because we've been a part of some of these these things that are going on. Only God knows for sure. But if we don't check our thoughts, if we don't gather our thoughts, and think about what we're thinking about, then we're in danger of going astray. We're in danger of allowing those thoughts to take us down a road that we don't want to go. And Paul told the Corinthians that, and speaking to the believers, that yes, we're human, but we, we don't do as the humans do. The warfare of the, the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. A stronghold is a thought that has taken up residence and has built up a fortifying wall to either keep things out or keep them in. And depending on whether or not it lines up with God's word, it should not be a stronghold in our lives. And so we need to gather our thoughts. And if they do not line up with God's purpose, and plan and will for our lives, then we need to cast them down, throw them in the trash so they can be taken out by the proper authorities. Amen. And so I pray that you are encouraged by this short conversation. It's just a brief part of what uh, Paul had to say to the Corinthians. Uh, He wrote several (laughs) letters to them while he was imprisoned, but it was an important piece of information that we are to take every thought that doesn't line up with God's will and bring it into captivity to the obedience of Christ for the sake of our own minds, that we might have a sound mind and that our minds might be more and more like that of Christ Jesus. I pray you're encouraged by today's message. I pray that you take time to think about what you're thinking about and to begin to discard those thoughts that do you no good, that are doing you no good. Okay? I I love you. I am praying for you. I, I trust that God is working in your lives even now. And I'm going to close out in prayer. Um, And I thank Pastor for the opportunity to be able to share uh, this word with you today, again, coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Look at it, meditate on it, and let the Holy Spirit speak to you about it. Let us look to the Lord. 
Father, we are so grateful for your word, grateful that you are concerned about the thoughts that rage through our, our minds, oh God. We are grateful that you have given us a remedy in answer to the thoughts that you do not want us uh, lingering on, that you do not want to take up residence in our minds. We thank you that you've given us the power and the authority by the name of Jesus Christ to bring these thoughts into captivity, that the moment a thought comes to us, we can say, no, I will not claim that thought. I will not hold on to that thought. Be gone in the name of Jesus. And we trust, oh God, that as we continue to do so, our minds will be freed up to meditate on the life-giving word that you have provided for us in your Bible. I ask, oh God, that you bless every household represented uh, on this call. I pray, oh God, that you see to every need and concern. I pray, oh God, for the continued comfort of those who are grieving, that you would show up in the lives of those who are battling sickness and affliction, that you would make a way where there seems to be no way for, for jobs and other opportunities and for relationships, oh God, that you be who you are, that you would show up and be glorified in our lives, that you would continue to unite us in thought, oh God, and as we think about what we're thinking about, may our thoughts turn to you, and may the focus of our thoughts be about you and what you have called us to do in this time. It is in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, and have a great evening.